Greetings, Radiant viewers! We'll now visit the exciting city of Chicago, Illinois, USA again to meet vegan raw food pioneer and the forever young Karen Calabrese. Ms. Calabrese has been featured on many national popular television programs, such as The Oprah Winfrey Show, CBS Sunday Morning News, and NBC's The Today Show, plus featured in Chicago's two largest newspapers, the Chicago Tribune and Chicago Sun Times. She has also been honored with the first annual Raw and Living Foods Golden Branch Award in 2002 for introducing the idea of raw and living foods to the greatest number of people in mainstream society. All the women in my family died overweight and very young. I was just 64 two days ago, mm -hmm. and I don't know what illness is, I don't know what being tired, uh, it just isn't a part of my world or my vocabulary. Her positive attitude and boundless energy have helped her maintain the longest operating raw food restaurant in the United States. Karen's passion for clean living and her love of life are her greatest motivations. 30 years ago, she used raw foods and detoxification to heal herself of allergies, skin problems, fatigue, and many other physical ailments, and has since been a radiant example of the incredible benefits of plant-based living. I haven't had meat, fish, chicken, or dairy in 42 years now, wow. and it has served me very well. I don't get sick, I don't get tired, I went through menopause with no symptoms, I've got the same body I had at 16, and I work 16 hours a day, six days a week at 64. Are you ready to spend some time with the charming and forever young Miss Karen Calabrese? Let's go for a visit to her kitchen to learn some of her brilliant recipes of food perfection. Hi, I'm Karen Calabrese, and we're here today at my raw vegan restaurant, and I'm going to be making some food for you. So everybody always asks me, what do you eat, Karen, for breakfast? And I like to remind people there's no such thing. We weren't born with a little tag on our foot saying, feed this at 9, this at 12, and this is six, at 6. In reality, we're supposed to eat when we're hungry. But what I like to do is start off my day with a green smoothie. And the green smoothie kind of feeds my body everything it needs for the day, and it really sustains me until the afternoon when my body starts adding, asking for more fuel. So my my favorite green smoothie is, of course, my green meal shake. I have my own products here, but there are many things out on the market. You don't have to use my green meal. So what I like to do is take a product called Rejuvelac, and we sell it, but it's very easy to make. You can get it in, in my book, or there are many recipe books out there. And what it is is a fermented um, good protein drink and it's made with sprouted spring wheat berries and it's going to give us the good bacteria. But if you don't have Rejuvelac, you could use all apple juice or in actuality you could use any juice that you're comfortable with. So I'm going to do a combination of the Rejuvelac, it's also B vitamins and B12, and I'm going to add some organic apple juice to this. And then I'm going to add two tablespoons of my green meal and once again this could be two tablespoons of any green food that you like because in actuality the human body is supposed to be existing on 70 percent chlorophyll a day. So you really want to make sure you're getting in lots of greens, greens, greens. This is your oxygen, this is your enzymes. And then I'm going to put in two tablespoons of flax oil. Actually, you could use any oil you're comfortable with, if it's an oodles oil or a coconut oil, um, any oil, but we like to use the flax oil here. We're going to put in two tablespoons because we're supposed to have salt, fat, and sugar every day. And then I'm going to put in two tablespoons of lettuce and granules. This isn't actually raw. It is made from soy. But the beauty of uh, lettuce in it is it helps the body convert fat to muscle. It's great for lowering cholesterol levels. And it's going to give our smoothie that nice creamy effect since we aren't doing any cow secretions or uh, dairy in it. I'm going to put in a frozen banana. But now this could be any frozen fruit that you like. We like the bananas for the potassium. And we like to get nice brown bananas and um, freeze them. Peel it before you freeze it, OK? So I'm going to blend this up very quickly. Ooh. Thank <laughs> you. 
And I just made myself what you'd call breakfast. But you know what? I could have this at any time of the day. I could have it for a snack. I could have it for lunch. I could have it for dinner. And it's this beautiful green color. Here you have all your enzymes, your oxygen, and chlorophyll for the day. All right, so this is, I will often start my day off with a green meal smoothie. I'm going to put this stuff away, and we're going to go on to the next thing. I'm going to make some sushi rolls. Sushi is actually anything with rice, and you could put anything with it. But because we're doing a raw class today, we're not going to even get to use the rice, because that's cooked. And uh, we're not going to do any cooked products today. I'm going to take my wheat berries. And this is going to be my rice. In actuality, it's these sprouted spring wheat berries that we're actually making our rejuvelac with. I'm just going to take some of the sprouted spring wheat berries, and it's so easy to sprout them. And I'm going to add some sesame oil to them to give them some flavor. And this is going to be my rice. So I'm going to let this sit for a minute. I'm going to add just a tiny pinch of nama shoyu to this. And the beauty of raw food cooking, there's no such thing as a mistake in a raw food kitchen. I could put um, oregano and Italian herbs in it and make an Italian rice if I wanted. I could add curry to it and make an Indian rice if I wanted. Uh, it's just going to kind of take on the flavors, as tofu does, of whatever I'm putting in it. And we're going to add salt, very necessary ingredient. I know a lot of people are frightened of salt. But we need salt. We need the right salt. The uh, white salt that you find in the supermarkets is actually going to draw minerals, and it's going to increase your heart rate and whatever. But if you do a crystal Himalayan pink salt or a Celtic gray salt, you're going to really get vitamins. You know, in the olden days, they used to put salt licks out for the cows and the animals so that they got their minerals. So you really do need the minerals. And the next thing that I'm going to prepare and get ready, because I'm going to use these also, are mushrooms. Now, these are just plain button mushrooms, you know, the white button mushrooms. But you could use portobello. You could use any kind of mushroom that you want. And I've got these mushrooms. And I like to marinate in bags. And you can put them in the refrigerator, and they will last for everything. So all I did was put some salt, some of my Himalayan salt in here again, some olive oil. And I let it sit in the bag. And it's going to taste like it's cooked. You could do shiitake mushrooms. You could do portobello mushrooms. You could do any mushroom like this. So I've already started these marinating. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a pate. And this is where my book comes in. Soak your nuts. <laughs> because we actually soak the nuts before we prepare them. And what that does is it breaks down the enzyme inhibitors and the fats. It makes them easier to digest. And where it would normally take you a whole bag to get full, six or seven of them, and you feel satisfied. And you really only need to soak them maybe four or five hours. What I actually do is just soak everything out overnight. I just put it in a jar, put it in my filtered water in my kitchen, and let them soak overnight. So we're going to take these that we've already drained and cleaned. And this is approximately maybe a little over a cup and a half. So I'm going to take these soaked almonds. And I've been asked before, do you blanch them and take off the shell? If you're that kind of perfectionist, go for it. Me, I can eat the shell. I've broken it down. I'm putting these in a food processor with an S blade, the S blade with the food processor. All right. Uh, I'm going to add some onion. This is about a half of a medium-sized onion. But here's the deal. Any vegetables you have in the house, if you have any zucchini, if you have, you can add garlic to it. I'm going to add two cloves of garlic. And I'm going to add some tomatoes for a little moisture. But you could add anything to this. If you've got some vegetables that aren't looking so beautiful in the kitchen any longer, Throw them in with your almonds, and you could do any nut. It doesn't have to be almonds. It could be walnuts. It could be pine nuts. It could be Brazil nuts. I'm going to add a little of namo shoyu to this, which you could add your Celtic sea salt or tamari. And this is just a basic recipe, but like I said, you could add uh, Italian spices to it. You could add, uh, you could even put some of the um, toasted sesame oil in there to give it an Asian flavor if you want it. So now I'm going to blend this up into a paste or a pate. I want to get all the sides in there. 
You know what I like to add in mine sometimes too, because I'm just such a big fan of olive oil. I like to throw in a little olive oil. I like to put a little fat in everything. So I'm gonna put a little olive oil in there. You could put avocado in there if you want. I mean, this is just a very basic recipe that you could take it anywhere you want. So, all right, we've got our little olive oil in there now. Maybe a little bit more of the tamari. And I just made a meal, almond pate. And you can do so many things with this. I'm gonna taste a little bit of it for you and see if it's suitable. Mm. I mean, that is so good. What did it take, five minutes? Not even five minutes to do it. Lively viewers, thank you for joining us for Vegetarianism, the Noble Way of Living. We'll be back with Miss Karen Calabrese on Friday, October 7th for the second part of our show. So now I'm going to take this almond pate and I'm going to show you all the wonderful things you could do with it. She'll show us how to transform the pâté into three raw vegan dishes that will surely wow your guests and loved ones. Oh, and we'll also make a healthy yet scrumptious dessert to complete the meal. We'll see you then. Coming up next is Between Master and Disciples. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. May your days be filled with pure joy and spirited inner energy. For more information on Karen Calabrese and staying healthy and forever young through veganism and detoxing, please visit www.karenraw.com. I'm Karen Calabrese and we're here today at my raw vegan restaurant and I'm going to be making some food for you. Hello health seekers, we're glad you could join us on Vegetarianism, the noble way of living with our special guest, the ever youthful and charming Karen Calabrese. Miss Calabrese has been featured on many national popular television programs such as The Oprah Winfrey Show, CBS Sunday Morning News, and NBC's The Today Show, plus featured in Chicago's two largest newspapers, The Chicago Tribune and Chicago Sun-Times. She has also been honored with the first annual Raw and Living Foods Golden Branch Award in 2002 for introducing the idea of raw and living foods to the greatest number of people in mainstream society. I haven't had meat, fish, chicken, or dairy in 42 years now. Wow. And it has served me very well. I don't get sick, I don't get tired, I went through menopause with no symptoms. I've got the same body I had at 16. And I work 16 hours a day, six days a week at 64. 
Her positive attitude and boundless energy have helped her maintain the longest operating raw food restaurant in the United States. Karen's passion for clean living and her love of life are her greatest motivations. 30 years ago, she used raw foods and detoxification to heal herself of allergies, skin problems, fatigue, and many other physical ailments, and has since been a radiant example of the incredible benefits of plant-based living. On Wednesday, Ms. Karen Calabrese showed us how to make her nourishing green meal smoothie and a special versatile raw vegan almond pate. And I just made a meal, almond pate. And you can do so many things with this. I'm going to taste a little bit of it for you and see if it's suitable. Mm. I mean, that is so good. What did it take, five minutes? Not even five minutes to do it. Today, we're back in the kitchen with Karen to learn several incredible raw vegan recipes that will surely impress. So now, I'm gonna take this almond pate and I'm gonna show you all the wonderful things you could do with it. Remember those mushrooms that we marinated? Let's take the mushrooms and we're gonna make appetizers. For our friends, you've got people coming over to dinner or you have to go to someone's home and they ask you to bring something to eat. So if you remember, we marin marinated our mushrooms and you could do this the night before. You could make the almond pate the day before. I mean, this doesn't have to, have to be done in the moment. And the beauty is, is that you do them ahead of time, the flavors kind of go in a little further and last a little longer. And I'm gonna take my mushrooms and I'm going to fill it with part of the, some of the pate. And this is so, I mean, it's unbelievable, the combination. It's so delicious. So we'll just put those mushrooms on there. Wish you could be here and taste them with me. And I think just to pretty it up a little bit, I'm going to add some little grape tomatoes to add a little sweetness to it. So we have salt, fat, and sugar here. That's what the human condition is always looking for, salt, fat, and sugar. And these little grape tomatoes are very nice and sweet. I'll put a little parsley on top. So, and there you have a perfect little appetizer plate to take to a friend's home or to serve to your friends when they come over. The other thing you can do with your almond pate is when it gets a little old, it's been in the refrigerator for a few days, I take it and make little patties out of it and dehydrate them. And you can use these for crackers or a bread. And you could blend your mushrooms and put it in the between and eat it like a little sandwich. So this is just the dehydrated almond pate. And they're pretty yummy too. And it's a great snack and it's food on the grow, go because when you dehydrate foods, you just remove the moisture, but the enzymes stay intact if you don't dehydrate it over 110 degrees. So now I'm going to take the same delicious almond pate. I just want to show you how easy it is to run a raw kitchen. We're going to take the same pate and we're going to mix it with some chopped onion, a little dulse to make it have a seafood flavor. We're going to put chopped onion in there, chopped celery, and guess what you just made? Tuna fish. You just made yourself a nice raw tuna fish. And you can take pine nuts and macadamia nuts and make a, an olive oil and make a great raw mayo. You want to add some chopped onion to it, chopped celery, and you just made a tuna fish salad. And one of my favorite things to make, we'll make next, is we're going to make some sushi rolls. I'm just trying to be a little fancy today and use a mat, but you don't have to use a mat. And we're going to take our nori sheets, and you can get raw nori sheets, and you want them scored towards you. You want them being rolled towards you. Our pretend rice that I made with the um, sprouted wheat berries, this is going to be our rice for the nori sheet. And we're going to spread it on the nori sheet like it's a rice. But if you don't have the sprouted wheat berries, you could use lettuce. You could actually make a rice with cauliflower and pine nuts, like we make our um, mashed potatoes. I'm going to add uh, just a little bit of lettuce to it, just to add more greens there. I'm going to add um, a little onion. 
Uh, you could add carrots or celery. We're going to take some of the sunflower greens and put them right here toward the end. And you know what I did this morning when I was making this for the first time? I did something really unique. I added some sliced mango to it. You know, most Asian restaurants, they add a little sugar or something sweet, so I figured a little sliced mango would add a totally different flavor and texture to it with all the sesame oil and the salt and the, oh, let's put avocado in there too. Let's have our fat. So I'm gonna put some avocado in there. You could have just about any vegetables in your house. You could marinate them in the olive oil and a little salt, and they'll taste like they're cooked. We'll add some almond potato to this. So now we're going to push this all together. Oh, and we want to wet the end of it. We'll put a little water here. OK, and we want to tighten it. OK. And then we lift it up and roll it a little more, and we tighten it some more. But like I said, if you're not proficient with the mat, you could actually just roll it yourself. Just keep rolling it forward and tightening it up in there. You see we have this wonderful nori roll. I'm going to add a little more moisture on the outside of here, even maybe a little of the nori to hold it together. And we just made a delicious sandwich. Now, once again, this is our almond pate. So I'm going to take this, and you need a nice, very sharp serrated knife to do this. This could also be an appetizer, or you could serve it as an entree. So I'm going to get a plate and plate my beautiful nori wraps on here. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? And it's totally raw, very healthy for you. And you could take this to work for like a, a sandwich to eat throughout the day. Put a real tall one right there. And then we'll put some tomatoes around there on the plate, some more of the lettuce, and some of the mangoes because these and my mangoes, my favorite mangoes are these beautiful yellow mangoes. They don't have string. So we just made an entree. So how many seconds did that take to make? How's that? Looks pretty exciting to me. And this is all done with our almond pate. Hi, so now we're going to make one of my favorite desserts. People get so frightened about a raw kitchen. I don't know how to make raw foods. Well, we all actually eat raw foods, and it's much easier to make. I mean, I can make everything in one blender here. I don't even have to wash it in between. Honestly, I mean, I do, but you don't have to. You could just make everything one after another in here. In fact, some of the flavors as they mix together really gets quite interesting. You don't know what you're going to come up with. You never have a mistake in a raw kitchen. So once again, we have soaked nuts, which is what the book is again, soak your nuts. So we're going to take our soaked nuts, and this time we're going to use cashews. This looks like about two cups of soaked cashews, and we're going to put it in our Vitamix again. And we're going to use, oh, about uh, two cups of purified water. I like to add to all my desserts a pinch of salt your sweets, it kind of helps to bring out the flavors if you put a little salt in there. And once again, all I'm going to do is blend. So I have my soaked cashews in here, and I put the water in. And now I'm going to add sweetener and agave nectar to it. Any sweetener that works for you is fine, but we like the agave nectar. It's a nice vegan sweetener. And we're going to blend it. And you want to blend it until it's a nice, creamy, smooth consistency. Um, so you could use this as a cream. You could use it as a milk. You could make it even thinner. It's really delicious. Now I'm going to take this mixture, and I'm going to let it sit in the refrigerator. And as it gets cold, it will thicken up. You see, this is getting nice and thick. So here's the dessert. Here at Karen's uh, Fresh Corner, we make a nice raw granola. So you could use the granola with the cream and use it like a breakfast. Or you could take some flaxseed, some ground flaxseed, and uh, we're going to layer this with ground flaxseed. We're going to add some of our 
cashew cream to the mixture. And then we're going to add some sliced bananas. And this is a very elegant, pretty dessert to serve your friends, or you could eat it for breakfast, or you could eat it for dinner. Remember, there's no tags on our food. Now I'm going to add another layer of flax to this. And maybe I'll add just a little granola to it to give it a little more substance. And then I'm going to add more of our cream on top. And then let's start getting some color in here. I'm going to add strawberries, but you could use raspberries. Nice, fresh, organic strawberries here. I'm adding a little more granola in there. Um, you could add some other ground nuts if you like. You make uh, walnuts or something you could ground up and add. I like the flax seed, more of the flax. Let's throw a few more bananas in there. And then you could take the same mixture and dehydrate it. Absolutely, you could dehydrate it and it would come out kind of like a cookie, a nice soft cookie. You could add a little vanilla to it. That would really add to the taste. Some vanilla bean. I don't have enough time. That's really not a, a good excuse in a raw kitchen because you could make all of this ahead of time. It takes seconds. Oh, you could put a beautiful little mint leaf on top of this. Uh, let's add some more of the granola on top. And you just made a beautiful dessert. A fruit parfait, I'd like to call it. We send our gratitude to Miss Karen Calabrese for being such an endearing inspiration for compassionate eating. With your beauty, kindness, and tireless efforts in promoting plant-based nutrition, Karen, may we soon transform the world into a haven of vibrant health and happiness. I always say, I'm not teaching anything special, and I got the best business partner on the planet, God, you know, <laughs> because I'm just helping you to step back into his plan, and there's no way it can't work. And so if you start feeding your body the way it was meant to, the, the, the raw living foods, the vegan foods that it was intended to take in, it changes your attitude, it changes everything, it changes your connection, not only with the planet and the universe, but the people around you. Esteemed viewers, we have enjoyed your company today on Vegetarianism, the Noble Way of Living. Stay with us now for Between Master and Disciples, here on Supreme Master Television. Blessed be your altruistic heart and noble deeds. For more information on Karen Calabrese and staying healthy and forever young through veganism and detoxing, please visit www.karenraw.com.